Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Red Hot Gamers podcast. Uh, my name is Blade. I've got Morel with me and the Reverend. Hi, All right, boys. It has been a while. We've had a bit of a yes. break. Shit's been happening in real life. Uh, all the way from Canada. We've had some snowstorms, believe it or not, haven't we, Brumrell? You've had some fun with your spade. And that's not a racist term. Oh, my God. It is now that you've mentioned it. <laughs> I still <laughs> haven't tweeted those pictures. I really should get on that. Like, the seven-foot snow drift. It's good fun. It sounds like fun. Build a snowman. Good, because you've got no choice for the next three weeks. <laughs> Um, you've had some issues as well. Yeah, I've had numerous issues, technical problems, that have really left me quite deflated on the PC uh, spectrum, so to speak. Uh, I, I will regain my faith. I'm not. I'm not going to, you know, run out on a hoe. But, uh, but yeah, I've definitely you... been very close to smashing the shit out of my computer on yes. more than one occasion. Losing this, this is why you never buy a 500 gig SSD. It is, uh, especially As- a brand that you've never heard of before. Don't oh, do that. Gosh. No. That's on sale. A brand you've never heard of on sale uh, with something you know that's that can be as iffy as an SSD. Don't do it. Don't. don't no. no. But either way, you're back now. This is We're what back. counts. Everyone's back. Woo-hoo. Well, kind of everyone. Aren't we missing a everyone couple of Texans? Yes, we are missing a couple of Texans. One of which is in Hawaii. The cow. I wish I was in Hawaii. <laughs> I won't That'd be, be here right. for starters. <laughs> is it, does it snow in Hawaii? I don't think so. Morel could take it with him. It'd be we could ask Pontin. We could ask Pontin. Um, but he was in Beverly Hills the other day, actually. Everyone's been travelling around. How they let that, me. Well, this is the guy that... Yeah, he was in North Dakota for a bit. Too. Yeah, he was, in, he was in Dakota. Then a couple of days later, he was in Beverly Hills. Uh, I would like to point out, this is the guy that we wouldn't let into the UK. High quality. Um, well, we'll just do it. We'll do the best we can. Yeah. Uh, under well, extremely poor circumstance. To be quite honest, this is the easiest issues that I've had to deal with uh, in the past few weeks. So, yeah, fuck it. Uh, right then, lads. Uh, we ain't been here for a while. So, what have we been doing? Well, shall I go? Why not? Storm's got to. <laughs> Heck, uh, I'll I'll go then. Um, seven days to die. Uh, I've not played in over a week, but I was I was really really back into that. But I'm sort of at a point now where there's not a lot more I can do. Uh, I created uh, you've seen it, the super secret underground bunker. Yes, the super secret underground bunker is pretty pretty fucking swag. To be fair, it, it was it was pretty cool. Um, but it's kind of it's it the awesome power of the underground bunker is is too much. So I was like, there's nothing more. I've got everything. What, what else can I possibly achieve uh, mm. other than simply survive? Um, but this last week, because there was a Steam sale on, uh, I bought Shadow of Mordor and I've been obsessively playing it. And, and, and you know, the weird thing is I'm not even convinced it's that good. No, mate, you're talking bullshit there. It was my <laughs> game of the year. Really? Yeah. I don't... Can you I remember? It was... It, Back to podcast one, all those yeah, weeks I, ago. I, I, I remember. I'm just not convinced. I am obsessively playing it, yeah, and I'm remember not sure that, why. Remember, last year's games are absolute horseshit, though. True, but I would rate Far Cry Four higher mm. as a, as a gaming experience. Shadow of Mordor, really, it's just a slightly bland looking Assassin's Creed with a really clever captain system thing. That is the, good. Uh, I liked it. I can't what you call it. Is it adversary system or? Uh, it's uh, the nemesis system. Nemesis system. That was it. Yeah. Um, other than that, I'm not sure what I've been playing. Uh, just, but then just the, the... Uh, we're getting to, going to shadows again. Um, hmm. Have what have you been doing on there though? Because I spent most of my time either doing the story missions or <laughs> hunting down the bastards that that had killed me in the nemesis system. I didn't do a lot of side quests. I've done a mix of everything. Because yeah, I know I, you're a bit of a side quest boy, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll well I think actually we're coming to that a bit later. Um, but yeah, I I I do get so I like to get the most out of a game. So I, and also, it actually it rewards you pretty well. That's one thing I do like about it is that the reward the rewards and the power ups actually make a fucking difference. Yes, they do. And I'm probably about two thirds of the way through all the sort of collecting and upgrading and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. and it, it does really it really does make a big difference it makes it a lot more fun 
Um, so yeah, I'm obsessed with replaying it. I'm not 100% convinced yet, probably because I'm not a Lord of the Rings fan. Now you um, see, that's that the thing. I I was and I am um, love Lord of the Rings, and when I heard that they're making a game that was basically Assassin's Creed but with a Lord of the Rings skin, I was loving it. Uh, that's that's the other thing as well. For a game that's a movie license to not suck completely, <laughs> yeah. oh, exactly. credit where credit's due. Because they have made plenty of Lord of Rings games before, but they've pretty much all been terrible. I think actually we should dedicate a podcast to all the terrible <laughs> to, games. To bad licensed games, Just yeah. poorly licensed games, we, yeah, movie tie-ins. We, it would take a lot more. Uh, Morel, I think we've lost your video again, mate. Oh. All right, do we start it out like nothing happened just there? Yeah, I'll, I'll use some editing tricks. Okay. Um, should, should we... Uh, quickly moving on from Shadow of Mordor, <laughs> I might ask, what have you been playing, Morel? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not oh, my potato net is struggling. This is a... That, that, I know, Morel, that was a difficult question that, you, that you've never been asked before. my friend. Yeah, probably. Um, like I was saying earlier, we don't. I've been fighting with my ISP now for several weeks in regards to my internet speeds. I would, I would um, take them to court under the false advertising that they're actually uh, providing an IS in the, in the first place. Well, see, yeah. this is what blows my mind. Right now, I'm on uh, my ISPs. I'm not going to badmouth anybody. Uh, because I don't want to get sued by a company that has billions of dollars. But uh, I have ultra-high-speed internet. Do you? Which is a download of 5 megabytes per second. Does that mean that you have two oxes pulling the cart of data? Oh, just wait. This gets better. My uh, upload speed gets capped at 600 kilobits a second. So uh, that's That's ultra. Yeah, that's the ultra-high speed. There is fiber op in my area. But they told us that we'd have to pay fifty dollars, and it would be between four days and three weeks for a tech to come to the house. And the tech would come at literally every any time of the day, which doesn't work because my mom works from home. So uh, you know she can't just have some strange guy walk into the house and disconnect the internet for a couple hours, completely unannounced. So uh, yeah, we're we're gonna get that. Well, that interrupt then. the other strange guys that just walk in for business purposes <laughs> um we'll see yes and no the other people who tend to make appointments you know when you're talking about ladies as high class as this okay i'm gonna but uh anyway world of tanks has been my uh game this week yes yeah, world um, of tanks was in a tournament this weekend and my team placed fifth which is disappointing because if we had placed fourth, I would have won things. Uh, instead of just getting all. Uh, it was in uh, the uh, the under twelves Canadian best of eight. <laughs> no, believe it or not, it was the melee matchup. Anyone could have registered. They matched you up with a team, which is nice because normally uh, tournaments like this, it's clan based yeah. and it's retarded. So they went. It was just a max tier five tank, so middle of the road. You couldn't have any of these crazy like need a thousand hours to get into tanks and there was something like 300 teams so uh we did really good uh other than that so, i've also been playing marble heroes a terrific android game which is like pokemon and marbles all rolled into one i'm actually really excited about you it. said marble and not marvel I thought it marble, was marble. See? marble heroes. Marble heroes. <laughs> it's if ever free. I... you collect different marbles and they all have different powers and you can evolve your marbles to make them better. If ever I could smell a pending lawsuit for a, <laughs> like an Android game, it's probably that. Uh, like Marvel coming in and saying, you based it on our name, it's clearly, clearly a... No, see, if you look really careful, the O is a marble. It makes sense. Oh, it is, yeah. That's that's the yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no grounds at all. <laughs> no, it's definitely it, not it, infringing on copyright. Like it's definitely not. I'm going to show you guys my team here. Those are my marbles. Oh, that's the event screen. Those are straight up my marbles. I have a dragon and a goblin that rides a boar, and a chick with a hydra. I think. Shit me, marbles have moved on a lot since the 80s when yeah, I used them. Oh yeah, no, it's crazy. I'm not quite sure I like, could fit one of them up my nose. 
No, no, no. Which is what I used mine for. Visit with a dragon. See, see, Skype just kind of cut out for a second there, and I was really worried what hole Young Blade was sticking marbles into. I had a few guesses, and none of them was your nose. Well, I put them up my nose. I'm not saying what other people did. I think we all did. Um, not the same ones, perhaps. Um, but it, but <laughs> I'm going to be way. completely honest. Uh, my parents loved me, so I never had marbles. No? No. But now you've got your own. <laughs> For at least a couple of months until the lawsuit oh, yeah. just finished. They just gave him a whole bag to keep him happy. A whole a bag marbles. of dick marbles. <laughs> <laughs> the best brand of marbles out there, Dick uh, Marbles. Dick Marbles. So can it's, it's you actually get, like, sounds, sounds like a PI from the fifties. <laughs> <Name Marbles, laughs> Dick Marbles. <laughs> I don't know why. She uh, walked in here on games that went for days and sat down <laughs> in my office and said, "Dick, I heard you're the best." Marbles, Dick Marbles. Can you get like wolverine wool, 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 wool mar- marbleine? <laughs> And oh jeez, how have we wandered I, so far? I have not Genable, come across Genable Grable. <laughs> nor have I come across like Professor F or <laughs> Cyclips. Or Professor or Paul Xavier? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't really doesn't really work. I, I'm I gonna really come up with didn't expect <laughs> Marble Heroes to be the most controversial game I mentioned. <laughs> You know, at some point, though, halfway through a conversation, one of us is going to come up with a really good X Men Marvel based <laughs> yeah. pun that we'll just have to completely derail <laughs> conversation for. It would, uh, it, it will be, uh, it will be awesome. I was trying to work out one for Sab- Sabretooth, then, but it didn't work. Um, so yeah, I, I, I give up. Um, but Marble uh, Tooth, Jesus, come on, man! What? Marble Tooth. Oh, we, we can do. We could. We can do better, and we should do better. So I'm going to put that on ice right now. <laughs> Iceman Mobile. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 he was I don't know. What was the Iceman called? Was it was he he was called Iceman, wasn't he? Uh, you had the, you had the two lads, didn't you? One who could fire, make fire, and one who could freeze. Yeah, shit. I can't remember. I'm pretty actually. sure that is. I ne- feel like we've left our wheelhouse. That uh, '80s pop culture probably isn't. <laughs> What this podcast is about. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think you're probably right. Uh, so, what is the most controversial game that you was going to mention? Is it Full Life? Well, no, I, I had honestly life? expected to get a lot of flack from uh, World of Tanks. But, However, uh, if we want to talk about controversial games, there's a terrific one called Seduce Me. Uh, it was on Steam. I don't know if it is anymore. Is that the spanking one? Um, I don't think there's any spanking, but it's it's like a sexy card game that I played a while back. Oh, how, how did it shape up against Rape Simulator? <laughs> um, well, I I never played that one, so I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had some sort of witty comeback, but I'm battling a boss. See, he has like shields. Look at those lives. The yeah. best I can do is Ian Marble Kellen just to come back from that and track <laughs> <Get it now. laughs> his life. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, yeah, folks, this has been the podcast. Thanks for listening. <laughs> so piss poor. Sorry, I'm being very rude. Uh, Blade, what have you been playing, sir? Well, in the time you've been able to play, because I know you've had a couple of hard drive issues. Yeah. Besides the Windows Seven installer, what Just, games? Yeah, that was a, that was a great time. I had it was had by all <laughs> the very <laughs> best of times. <sighs> oh, fucking hell, it's been a nightmare, mate. Just when I think I've got everything sorted, I've remembered every fucking program that I need. You know, I, I just get it nicely all back to normal, and boom, I get punched in the fucking nads again, and everything's oh. gone. Um, but I have had a bit of time for gaming. Um, whereas uh, our Canadian friend here has been playing World of Tanks, I tried War Thunder. Um, oh, yeah, shit on me. Which is basically world of tanks and world of airplanes but in the same game so you've got the planes and the tanks fighting on the same battlefields uh and i'm gonna be perfectly honest here i didn't get past the tutorial because it was terrible um Hmm. other people it has got some ridiculously good reviews on steam so i don't know whether it's just me but i couldn't I, i i was playing on the planes side of things 
and I just couldn't control it. It made no sense. I was using my Xbox controller as well, which should make things a bit easier. Uh, but no, I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Um, other than that, there's been a bit of FIFA um, in the You're time. Back into the FIFA since FIFA since you had your. Well, I kind of. Um, I don't think in yeah. I don't think in the last podcast I'd had my account reset. Had I, or had I? I think I think you had. But if I haven't, I think... yeah, it's quite a quick story. I had my account reset, which means I lost all my players uh, and all my cheated. coins. I, I was cheating, but you know, <laughs> they caught me. Fair play, I don't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> well, I do because I lost quite a bit of fucking money's worth of players, but you know. Yeah. So I had to start right from the bottom again, and I'm grinding my way back up, and we're getting there slowly. We're getting there. I'm about halfway up the leagues now. Uh, I've been playing uh, quite a lot of Hearthstone because that is one of the games that I had on one of my secondary hard drives, so it's managed to survive through all of these problems, um, and it's a pretty fun game that I like playing, so I've got a good deck as well. I don't know. How mentioned. much do you See, love having backed up saves, though? It's, Isn't it the greatest thing good. in the world? It's good. It's very good. Um, I feel a bit bad because, obviously, when I got my SSD, uh, I installed all of my favourite games onto my SSD for the increased performance. Yes. Um, and obviously when that failed, <laughs> uh, I lost all my favourite games. And I was able to get straight back onto some of my non-favourite games. So I suppose they got a bit more playing time. Uh, obviously I've been playing a lot of days, uh, not days, seven days uh, with yourself. Uh, yeah. Morel joined us as well. We've got a one episode up on... Uh, yeah, that's another thing. Um, unfortunately, I lost a lot of footage that we made during these hard drive fails. Damn it! Uh, yes. So, there will be more episodes, guys. I know you're all loving that series. That one episode that we put out so far. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> featured more swearing than yes. good fellas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think you was, a, you was a bit taken aback by that, wasn't you, uh, Rev? I didn't realise how much I swore, how, actually. How um, potty mouth you are. I do make a habit of uh, not watching or listening to myself. Um, I urge other people... Um, also do that, um, but I didn't realise I swore that much, so I was I was a little shocked. Um, not for the miners, wouldn't say that. <laughs> definitely not. Um, not de- the definitely effect. not for the miners. I am a reverend after all. <laughs> Indeed, um, licensed and certified. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, sort of. Yeah. Well, the choir boys call him reverend anyway, but. Uh, oh. Jesus H Christ! <laughs> this this really we, we've been so off track and derailing. It's <laughs> just it's, we just a, a tour de force of. I think one thing we just need to set out right now is that normally Mr. Blade, Senor Blado, is uh, quite on the ball with uh, keeping us reined in, <laughs> yeah. and no. generally has <laughs> a nice laid out sheet of paper that we can look at. Yeah. It's like. This is what we're going to be talking about. Hey, think about this for the rest of the week, and then we come here and have intelligent discussions. But I think I got a frantic Skype message about 15 minutes before the call that was like, here are some things we might talk about. Yeah, that's pretty much just what happened. I mean, yeah, not only have I had hard drive issues, uh, I've had two times in about the past four days um, that my fiber has been knocked out for hours. And... That just kills me. I I just don't know what to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And when when you're trying to battle with with downloading installers and drivers and all sorts of shit, it's really been the worst technological week I've had in my life. On the plus, upside, his uh, daughter turned into a werewolf. So you know, there's that going for him too. Yeah, but I mean, look, you know, the other side of things. Uh, he's had no internet, so you know you've got to, you've got to put these things in perspective. The whole werewolf thing, everyone's over that now. Um, <laughs> not having internet, that's just un- unreal. How you can't even Google how to cure um, being a werewolf. Exactly. You've got no exactly. She's still hairy as fuck. <laughs> I don't. Didn't I put her to bed earlier? Didn't even put a nightie or anything on her. No pajamas. <laughs> nothing. She didn't need it. Covered Jesus. In fucking hair. This is pretty much the most inappropriate thing I've ever been a part of. You want to see when she takes a fucking shit, man. It mats up like hell. 
<laughs> you better be cutting this shit right out. <laughs> I can't see it happening. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna get... say this is like the highlight of the podcast. If top get... quality content if, thus far. If this is still in, if you're watching and listening to this, then congratulations. Yeah, yeah this week's did they turn off now? Because the rest of it is going to be absolute fucking garbage. <laughs> no, no, this things, this stuff we can talk about. We'll find. Things. Oh, we got plenty. Oh, we got plenty to talk about. There's, there's, there's plenty to talk about. There was, if we'd done it in the last couple of weeks, ironically, up until last week, there was pretty much no news. Well, there wasn't. Apart from fucking Grand Theft Auto. Again. 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 Delayed. Fucking idiot. Now, see, in all fairness, because I was complaining about this too, because my brother's a huge GTA Five person on the Xbox 360. And the issue that they're facing now is, like, the 360, what's out is out. Like, they're not getting any further updates. Yeah, they are. Uh, no. Yeah, All are. the updates are going to Xbox One mm-hmm. and PS whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Fight. I, fight. <laughs> fight. <laughs> fight. I'll fucking I'll marble fight. you. <laughs> oh, don't. I, I have some level 30 marbles Whoa. that are fully evolved. So I've only got those. a level 7 Charizard marble. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening now, but that Pokemon makes no ball. difference. Compared to the rest of the podcast thus far, so <laughs> <laughs> anyone who was able to follow this podcast at the end, we're going to put up an eight hundred number. We want you to reach out. Uh, you may have some serious mental disabilities <laughs> you must that have. need to be addressed. There will be questions at the end, kids. Now, one thing that I do want to mention: when when GTA Five is released on the PC, uh, we are getting the online heists that they've been talking about. For the rest of the GTA people that have already been playing it for near fucking <laughs> a year and a half, um, we're getting it straight away. They claim now whether that ends up happening because obviously they've got issues uh, that they're not willing to talk about. Not high, yeah, not a, um, yeah. but see the the heists <sighs> the heists are coming to Xbox One and the download is about four <sighs> gigabytes and it's coming to 360 as well and it's about 1.4. See, here's my only concern with GTA V. I am a huge GTA fan. Love the series. Love everything about it. It is the cat's pajamas. However, I personally refuse, absolutely refuse to pay full AAA price for a brand new AAA game on a game that's available already and has been for I a year and a half. And as much it. as I agree with you, um, and as much but as I... there are a lot of people saying, I'm going to cancel my pre-order, you know, and I encourage everyone else to do it, don't buy this game, rah, 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 you know, they're treating us like crap. <sighs> I can still see me buying it on day one. No, you know what? I had convinced myself that I was going to pre-order it. I wanted it that badly. But the price is a deal breaker for me. For the price of the new GTA on computer, I can straight up go online and get a used copy of GTA and an Xbox 360 to play it on for roughly the same price. Yeah. I mean, I, and if I get a 360, I'm watching Netflix on my TV while I watch porn. I've, I've, like, I've, got, I've got the 360, but then you've got to bear in mind, I really want it. I've completed it. I've, I played it. I quite liked it. Thought it was good. Not amazing. Certainly not the best GTA. I would. I would prefer to play Vice City, but with a, a modern makeover. Mate, Again, I would I happily it. do that. Love it. And um, I'd pay top dollar for that as well. I would. Yeah. I would. I would. Uh, no questions. I would. I would fucking love that. But really, I'm going to be getting it for the multiplayer, which is something yes. I didn't bother with that much on Xbox. Now, you've got to bear in mind, even if you do buy an Xbox, you're going to be paying 40 quid or, that's I think, 11,000 Canadian dollars um, <laughs> just to, just so you can play online with Xbox. Okay, for the first part, it's only 5,000 Canadian dollars. <laughs> no, for the record, the other day I went to the liquor store, and in the liquor stores here in Nova Scotia, because it's a federally regulated mind-altering substance, you have to go to a special store just to buy it. They have the American Canadian exchange rate. When I went in, the Canadian dollar was only 75 cents American. That hasn't happened since I was like in grade four. That's depressing. Uh, that sounded quite reasonable to me. I mean, but I don't really know what the exchange is. Dollar 75 cents. Yeah, I think, I think it's like 
60, 65, 70 pence is like... Yeah, you're looking around there. Oh, I could... Let's let's settle this right now. USD to... What's the euro? EU... Yeah, no, you want, not you euro, want, with you want GBP for sterling. Okay. Jibapa. Jibapa. I mean, not that it matters too much. Um, but, uh, yeah... Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll still, I'll still get it. And we've had this discussion before, where and we'll I would sooner they released, it. I would sooner they released a game that actually works. But in before they release it, and there's problems. Like I guarantee that the first day it comes out, their servers will flop under the sheer weight of all the PC gamers. One thing that I wish that they'd have done, because. And I'm only assuming it because they've not really spoken about it that much. But the issues that they're obviously having to have to push this back so much, I'm saying, is down to the online version. So, why couldn't they have released it, say, like, pre-order it now, you get the single player on release day. And patch it. And then, yes, and then we'll release the online when it's good and ready. But as we know, because we've discussed this before, they'll be doing that anyway, because <laughs> they always do that. And yeah. I swear, it's to it's to thrash pirates with nettles. They uh they, they put these games out. That's not my penis. That's my knee, by the way. Just, um, yeah, I'm glad you cleared that up. Um, all the choir boys got a little worried. His, his penis <laughs> is very similar. It's just not blue. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, I, I think they'll put it out. Uh, around the same time that probably a couple of days after it'll appear on Pirate Bay and such places um, but there'll be some sort of groundbreaking fault that there'll be a day one patch for oh yeah definitely as as you well, it's, yeah, it's uh, that seems to be their like go to thing nowadays isn't it yeah fuck the it game is. up on launch just to mess with the pirates it's a given was it you guys that were saying that, that Batman they did that there was like a no, glitch uh, whereby it was, it was Far Cry it was Far Cry 4 they uh, they removed a lot Batman of the, the graphical Arkham options. Arkham Asylum did it too, though. Did they? That if yes. you had the pirated version in the last mission, you your couldn't key dive wouldn't, or something. So you couldn't glide, and so you could yeah. never beat the boss. You would always die before you uh, fought the boss. Now I like this I, because this is reminding me about a bit of current news. Oh, the do uh, tell. the upcoming Batman game uh, has been rated mature, not teen. Oh, um, because it, do we finally get to see Bruce Wayne bone Catwoman? Because I would pay for not that. for sexual. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, I'm shake afraid that. it's I'm it's more of a purely Harley for Quinn, it's yeah yeah Harley Quinn mate. Yes, every day of the body, week. Body modification just creeps me out. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, you've uh, completely messed my track of all of that. <laughs> uh, uh, Batman, Batman. Um, yes, uh, it's um. Mainly for violence, um, it looks as though you're going to be able to play as other characters apart from Batman because uh, in the summariza- summarization that they gave of it, they said that you could shoot uh, unarmed people and hostages, which, as we all know, Batman doesn't do guns. So you will get to do that with somebody at some point during that game. Uh, and they used the, the word gobshite in there. <laughs> Yes, credit where credit's due because no teenagers have ever heard that term. Not before. at all. They probably so. haven't. They've heard plenty worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. What can I all? bring up? A bit of uh, gaming news myself, since we're on the topic. Seen as, of, seen as uh, we're uh, meant to be talking about gaming news, <laughs> let's go for it. Just, I feel that if I don't bring this up, it will never get mentioned. And uh, just while we're on the topic of like AAA industry, just kind of bending us all over the barrel and having their way with us. Uh, the Sims 4 first expansion pack was released, or was announced back in February. Okay. And uh, this is turning some fans, uh, some more fans I should say, against EA because the price of the expansion pack is going to be 40 US dollars. What? Now, in The Sims 4 they stripped out it's, so many things, it's actually easier to list the things they left in. Is the expansion them, called Sims 5? Oh. <laughs> because it, it well, fucking should be for that price. It gets yeah. even better. They've added some jobs. Um, I can't see here specifically which ones have been added. Um, but it's essentially the equivalent of uh, Sims 3 Ambitions or Sims 2 Open for Business 
where you can like start your own store and sell stuff out of like your own community right. okay. lot. Uh, which honestly, for non Sims players, is a huge, like, super cool thing to do. Um, I actually have an apothecary where I sell potions I make. It's great. And now that I sound like the world's biggest nerd, um, Sims 4, when they released it, was so incomplete that gamers were like, we're going to boycott your game. And EA flat out said, if you guys don't buy this as it is, we're going to stop making the Sims series. That sounds like an EA statement. That's the, that's an EA story right there, yeah. That came straight from the CEO's <laughs> mouth. It, it did, oh, yeah. Oh, quite probably. But we're looking, and it's kind of the same with you're saying, like, the first day patches, you know, just rush it out, get it out. Uh, the people that made Sims 4 had never worked on a Sims game before. They completely let go the entire staff that worked on Sims 3 mm-hmm. or put them on different projects. So it's like, this is one of the most notable EA games, and they've just they've destroyed it well, for like much a like of much like FIFA. Uh, the game this year isn't isn't terrible compared to last year's. They made a huge part of like the the pre-launch hype that the goalkeepers were going to be like uber intelligent this year, and it turns out they're just as moronic as normal. Uh, just like real footballers. Yeah. <laughs> They took out, they took out the player trading uh, to combat coin sellers, um, which just basically we've lost your video again, Meryl. Is it what I think it is? Syndicate is on. It is. It's the original it is, yes. Syndicate. It's a, I loved that. It's available for free. free. Yes, free. Aww. See, that's the magic word to me, Meryl. <laughs> I am all about the free. Believe See, it or not. Like I'll down when it pops up, it's like, "Hey, this game's free." I'm like, "I'll download it." I have like Plants vs Zombies or something, just because it was free. Yeah. Never once installed it. Never once opened it. <laughs> I I understand. Dude. You know, EA gets what? a lot of flack, but I think that you know they they have got one thing right here is is giving a free game away and now again, even if it is an old as fuck game that they're not going to make any money from if they sell it anyway. But you know what I mean? It's it's. A nice I gesture. That. I had that. But on- here's the thing: that's like saying, "Hey, you know, you kind of stalk me. You've keyed my car a couple times. You know, I'm pretty sure I've seen you following me around whatever supermarkets you guys have. The best part is it's but already- you occasionally leave cakes on my doorstep. So shit cakes, the cakes that no one else buys, <laughs> the cakes that are so- <laughs> the out of date cakes. Three old cupcakes from like the bad part of town. The one little bakery in the bad part of town. You know." But I'm genuinely excited about that. I actually, I've, I've already got it. I'm currently. Uh, well, do it. Do a retro playthrough series, my friend. I, I, I might. You know, I think I'm pretty sure I had that Those... on. Uh... Oh, hold on. I'm, that might be knocking me out there. I'm just firing it up. Oh God, no! It looks terrible. It does look terrible. <laughs> um, sometimes it's best. It actually brings up a DOS window as well. Yeah. Um, to to play it. So that's nice. Did it do that with Seab Hospital too? It did, mate. Yeah. I don't know. I I I, <laughs> I took the freebie and never Hospital? played it. Oh, I love Seab Hospital. Drop five I hours into it. Yeah, I've, five I've played hours quite a bit one... of Hospital. No, just wait. I didn't save my game. I saved it. It popped up. Idiot. It's like you have no saved games. Do you want to start one? And I was like, nope. I'm done. That's yep. bad. That is bad. Like I know there was days where I was playing Skyrim and I'd be like spend like an entire day playing and then I'd like my game would crash and I'd be like, Oh, guess I'm never touching that game again. Skyrim for days. Mentioning Theme Hospital and Skyrim in the same sentence is uh, <laughs> a bit of a strange Strictly one. Strictly speaking, I think grammatically those should have been two separate sentences. Uh, but I'm pretty drunk, so I don't think it matters. And also, getting back to my uh, my loss of internet internet connection, it not only fucked my life up, but it also damaged the income of those hard-working cam girls that are out there that, for those couple of days, had to go without the, the Red Hot Gamers cash going into their pockets. Well, cash if they were again. wearing any. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, I think I've missed something. Do we have Red Hot Gamer cam girls? No. But, uh... <laughs> Do we Maybe plug I'm them? Where, where's Red and, Hot and please, Gamer? Don't, oh. please don't tell fucking Inland Revenue... That uh, that I spend the company's money on on watching naked ladies dance 
on a camera for I didn't me. Hear nothing. <laughs> Good. As long as nobody mentions that and nobody heard it, we're fine. Uh, heard what? Brandy Bell. Brandy Bell is actually doing cam shows nowadays. By the way, um, she was she was quite a famous <laughs> porn star a few uh, only about two or three years ago. God, we really have drifted like the snow in Canada right now. Haven't we? <laughs> She's a lovely lady. There's going to be people that are just like. I just like talking to her. I just like people. talking to her. You can you can chat to them and everything. It's fine. <laughs> you know, just because she's got the tits out, it means nothing to me. That's not what I'm there for. Blade's yeah. there for the social experience. You know, he's friends with her moderators. He's in the fan club. Exactly. He has his own special little login. It's, it's her know. intelligent conversation that makes me orgasm. It has nothing yes. to do with the Sibian that she's riding. That's incredible. That's just it's just the chair with the cock. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah, I, I think this could be well, so see, much. Here's the thing: I think a lot of gamers, you know, when they play games, they're really just looking for that community. And I think uh, more more cam girls need to jump on that and create the sense of gaming communities. You know, have CTAs, have clam tournaments in your room. Just get people clam, in there. You know, clam tournaments. <laughs> clam, clam tournaments. <laughs> Uh, Brilliant. Uh, me, me and the missus do actually occasionally make up like wrestling moves, uh, like move the, names that have got okay, like. A, when you're naked, it's not a wrestling move. It, it is. Well, it is when he's choking her. The, the, the triple clown <laughs> slam uh, and and moves the, the wizard sleeve. Uh, there's 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 all sorts. Yeah. Um, they sound more like uh, Mortal Kombat finishes, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to see a, a triple clam slam. Melina, triple clam slam. <laughs> Finish. Can her. I just say, if this was a normal podcast, I think ninety percent of this would be getting cut. What do you mean normal? <laughs> yeah, I take offence to that. Yeah, <laughs> not a chance. Uh, uh, anyway, boys, onto a more serious subject. Yeah, it has been the uh, the GDC this past week, and I have been able to keep slight track on it. Uh, and there's been some mm, reasonable announcements. I think a lot of people are waiting to leave free to to you know deliver the hammer blows. Uh, but the big ones uh, was Steam with their virtual reality unit that them and HTC are making. Um, that does actually sound quite good. It's got 1080p fucking screens for starters, which is nice. Um, it's it's meant to be complete field of vision like capturing so it's not like the oculus where apparently it's not quite there like the screens aren't quite big enough or whatever i suppose uh this is meant to like completely immerse you uh which would be fantastic as much i do want vr to take off i do i'm very skeptical as to whether we're anywhere near the point of technology where it's going to be viable enough um, but it's going to be interesting to watch anyway. Um, but we'll see. It's one of those things where we just have to see. I mean, the Oculus, I think they've really, a bit like DayZ, they've took a bit too long getting a consumer product out. I mean, obviously, you've been able to buy Oculus for ages, uh, but they've been development issues. They've not been customer they've not been for for customers so you can pretend to be a dev and buy one for three hundred dollars or whatever see i kind of think that what might happen is they'll there'll suddenly be two or three of these that come out all vying to be industry standard a bit like usb and there was like usb and firewire and the, all these different i loved firewire the, by the way but there was all these different versions the same as our prime example Blu-ray versus HD DVD, yeah. uh, which now you can buy for like uh, two pence uh, anywhere, That's and and they made they they would try. It was going to be one or the other. And do you, do you and know I, do you know who had the deciding say in that? Who, uh, PlayStation wasn't it? Sony? Mm-hmm. No, the porn industry, my friend. Really? The porn industry decided that they were going to back Blu-rays. And, God. and as you might be aware, it is the biggest industry in the world. I'm still shocked people pay, people pay for it. But hey, yes. I know. Yeah, nowadays there's plenty of. Uh, you've got to keep these girls fed. <laughs> it's, it's, Especially it's true, yeah. some of the some of the cams that I watch. Those girls need a lot of feeding. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was a no. <laughs> it was a no-brainer though because it's blue, 
Um, you know, <laughs> blue, Blu-ray for the blue industry kind yeah, of thing. Definitely. Um, so, so there is there is that. Um, and as why as far happening. as VR goes, though, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love it in theory, but I have a very hard time even considering embracing it as standard for anything. Yeah, agreed. Uh, first of all, like you're saying, um, right now, Oculus Rift, $300. Why would I go drop $300 on something that's going to give me a headache when I can go and watch a 3D movie for 30 bucks? Well, the, the thing you is know? now... Um the Oculus Rift, as it is at the minute, if you was to buy a dev kit now, uh, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, it's got a good resolution and whatever. Uh, the design has changed quite a bit to make it look a bit better, be more comfortable and whatever. Um, but the issue that I would have had is like the, the first version of, of the Oculus Rift's dev kit, I'm sure it was only 480p. Um so if you bought in then, you got yourself this 480p bloody VR unit. And now, I, th- I think they're on 1080 now. If they're not on 1080, they're pretty close. Um, but if you want that, The only thing that buy will ever get me into VR is a full VR set, like can be seen in Otherland, a uh, series I'm currently reading. <laughs> um, just wanted to bring that up. I read books. I'm pretty smart. Uh, well, but I just <laughs> you can I read. Don't, it's better than I most can, Canadians, I suppose. Not to. I honestly wish I had a copy of one of the books with me right now, but they're all in the bathroom. But they're like this thick, and there's like five of them. It's great. But uh, the only other thing you've got I that thicker because the pages are stuck together. How, how do we get back to the bag of dicks? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about books. Thank oh, you very much. The difference no, between box. Steam's VR unit, though. It apparently has got lasers built on on it on the outside, and it maps the area around you, which is completely different to the Oculus. The Oculus is you, you can't move. You know, you've got your little controllers in your hand, you've got your head on. That's it. That's how you you do stuff. Whereas this, as far as I'm concerned, VR sounds great in theory, but for me to be even remotely impressed by it, you need to be completely. We're immersed. talking generations down the road. Right now, what you're trying to do is sell me a steam-powered car that goes much faster than my horse cart, but, you know, you have to have a second person throwing wood in the boiler. You know, in theory, sounds great. There's potential. The evolution will be great. But as far as, you know, first, second, third consumer-based VR, I probably won't have any of it. Yeah, um, Yeah. and... But the thing is, it has to start somewhere. You can't just leap straight into the amazing... I've, I've, I think one of the quotes from the guys um, that was at the GDC was something along the lines of, sorry if I get this completely wrong, is that we're kind of in the palm pilot stage of things now. You remember them, the shitty little to like laptop things that you could word process and whatever on, um, compared to like tablets. So in a few years' time... We will have the, the technology to be able to produce brilliant VR, but you do have to start at the bottom. The difference between Palm Pilot and VR is that the Palm Pilot was emulated by several very, very, very successful multi billion dollar a year companies that wanted to proprietize it. Where right now you're saying, yeah, Steam's kind of taking it and run with it, and you know they're you think, talking about some cool things. You think Valve don't have the money to but, put into this? Because I think they do. I think <laughs> they do, but until there's some, until Xbox or Microsoft comes out, and they're like, hey, yeah, we're Sony working, are working on, VR on one too. as well. Sony are working on a VR unit, but until they start competing, I think really what we're watching is just you know a couple guys with pipe dreams, I, and I, I really actually, don't want to shit on them for it, but you know I have yet to be impressed well, like said, I actually think the Palm Pilot analogy is a very very good one because uh, even after, and I think this actually relates to, to the three of us as well even after tablets came out, the iPad came out and I was like, I still see absolutely no reason <laughs> why anyone would want one, it's, it's a glorified browser, it's a big mobile phone Yeah. what's the point mm-hmm. and then I've, I've got two or three tablets Like you mm-hmm. just end up 
I, and, and admittedly don't use them as much as I could because now mobile phones are of such a size that they 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 just they just do ever. They're pretty much small there. tablets they're, rather they're than it. mobile phones. <laughs> But it's well, nice what to have is, them. It, isn't the like uh, iPad Mini or something just a slightly bigger iPod Touch? Well, that's the thing. I mean, yeah, the iPad um, is it the iPad Mini? Is that what it's called? I think it is. That's yeah, a smaller one, yeah, yeah. Or it's, there's like an iPad like, Nano or something, and it's like comparable to an iPod but a little bit bigger. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Oh. Uh, Apple, there's a lot that you can't do on them. Um, that on the Android ones, you just can. It just works. Certain video formats, for instance, but that's a whole other argument for another time. Um, but it's that that is a good example because Palm Pilots. Everyone was like, "Yeah, it's a yuppie toy," and I think, to be honest, sort of VR technology is still kind of a yuppie toy, like Google Glass, wearable yes. tech. Yeah, you know, it's the same sort of thing. Maybe there will be a time augmented reality is completely different from virtual reality. Just throwing that out there right now. Yeah, well, it, it is, but the thing is. I don't see me using it, but then there might come a time where it becomes like everyone's, you know, it's just, it is just the thing. Same as tablets. I, for like the first six plus months of those coming out, I was like, I'm never going to own one. Don't need one. Don't see the point. And you, you end up doing it. It's, it's just, you it's do. just how it is. I agree with you. But that. I'm certainly not going to be one of those people queuing up buying on day one. No. Goodbye, Morel, temporarily. Yeah. Also, there's been an, talked about obviously uh, steam machines have been talked about for quite a long time um which will basically be able to com- compete with uh the console thing to put in your living room is, is basically the idea um but they've actually released prices and specs for them now uh and it's confused me slightly and confused me because i kind of know what i'm talking about when it comes to specs but the whole point of of steam machines is to try and simplify things for people that don't want to get into serious PC gaming. And yet all they've done is release a list of what's going to be in the fucking Steam machines, which is basically just like you was buying a computer. I mean, it baffles me. But I think that's more or less the problem with this, is if Microsoft... Just Microsoft was the only one that was allowed to release laptops or whatever with Windows on them. You would see a much more standardized hardware. But right now, where there's only really two contenders for the mobile platform, three if you insist in including Nintendo, Mm. there's only these two companies making these consoles where... Right now, Rev, who makes your computer? Like, everyone. But, like, is it a branded, or did you make it yourself? I, I built it myself, but obviously it's... Uh, there's uh, MSI, Samsung, Corsair, uh, yeah. uh, Cooler Master, so, and you this know, is half a dozen more different or less brands. the point. We have so many companies that have their fingers in the pie. Well, yeah, I mean, the that, that's always going to be an issue, though, in, in any in any business. Um, but the point that I was trying to make, though, is that they're trying to make this as a, as a simplified version for people that don't want to get into PC gaming as such. Uh, but yet, they're just advertising them with what you would look at PC specs if you was to buy a new PC. They they've got to come up with some sort of rating system for them to say look you can play this new title Battlefield Hardline say it's coming out soon you can play Battlefield Hardline on this Steam machine at 60 frames a second at 1080p no problems Mm -hmm. you know something like that give it a fucking star rating just something so that people because the the people that are buying these uh, I can't see a lot of like Hardcore PC gamers buying these because there's no point. Um, because there's also a Steam Link, I believe it's called, which is going to be about fifty dollars, which is about what thirty thirty five pounds. Um, the basically you plug it into your TV and it can stream games from your PC onto your mm. TV. So you're just cutting out the middlemen for people who've got a, a high end PC anyway. You that's what they're going to choose. 
So are you still going to be limited by how good your PC is? If you're stream, what you mean if you're streaming it? Yeah. Yes. Oh well, yeah, of course you are. Yeah, yeah. And your internal Wi-Fi. Yes. Yeah, that will be an issue. Uh, obviously, we'll have to wait and see how how well it does. Um, it'll probably work better for um, like racing games and whatever, I suppose. Well, PlayStation's already doing that. You know. Here's the thing, though. Why isn't Steam already doing that? Why can't Steam get you know a uh, look at your computer and be like, okay, I know your specs. You know, I've been burned tons of times buying games that I thought would run on my computer that simply won't. Is someone tapping their microphone, by the way? I'm playing with my microphone cord. Oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> that could be it. Yeah, that'll, that'll be what it is. Um, um, I'll stop. That's it. Hands on. The position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, is, are these things necessary? I don't... Like when when I when I bought my phone, I went for a Sony Xperia A because it's it's waterproof uh, and does prove. Yeah, well, after my missus dropping her iPhone in the toilet. Um, but if you've got a PS4, which at the time I was seriously thinking about getting, you can actually use it to stream. You can you can pop it on your controller and you can play your PS4 from home. It can be at home, and as long as you've got a decent connection, you can actually play it on your phone. Which is genius, I thought. Genius. Obviously, I've, you know, six months in, still not bought a PS4. Probably never going to buy a PS4. Um, but it's a cool feature. But the thing is, like, now Steam is saying, Steam, who make an inordinate amount of money, uh, I believe myself and uh, Blade were having this discussion, how much is it they take off developers? 30% for each 30%. game sold. So 30% for each game sold, and you're telling me that they haven't got the money to develop this technology? Yeah, or it's, um... Yeah, well, I see, yeah, but, but, like I say, I mean, the, the the link is only thirty five quid, so it's it's in the sort of area, you know, it's the same sort of price as a game. So if you want to play, if you've got a game that you want to play on a on your big telly or whatever, then it's not too much to lay out. Whereas the machines themselves, I think they start at around four hundred dollars and they go all the way up to five thousand dollars. Uh, I mean, it's a joke. But that's the thing. You've got literally about 30, maybe even more options of different spec. Because not this is the other thing that's winding me up. So, like, Alienware have got, like, six different machines, say, with different specs. But mm. nothing but nothing to give someone a, a sort of, like, overall performance to go from, apart from the price. Effectively, it's an overcomplicated way of essentially just connecting your PC to your television, which I could do with a 5-meter cable. Well, the, the, Steam, machine, cable, the Steam machines don't done. do that. They, they run it themselves. Um, but the but way... But 10 quid the way versus that, 5 grand? Yeah, exactly. And the, but the way they're advertising it is, is just like you're buying a PC off the internet. It's, you know, which is not what they was trying to do. They're trying to pull console boys... Onto a, a gaming platform. Again, you know, maybe we're a million miles out. Maybe it's the tablet for video games. I just don't see it being I just don't necessary. See it. I can't see um, it. Happen. There are some games that I'd like to play on my big telly. Don't get me wrong, but for like I say for that, I'm already a PC gamer. I'll just spend thirty quid and get the link and just do it that way rather than paying five grand. That's it. Plus two, I mean, two hundred quid now will buy you a huge monitor, good yeah. quality monitor. Um, you know, twenty-eight inch monitor when you're only four, you know, three, four feet away. Uh, geez, man, it's a no-brainer for me. I, 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 again, I don't get that. I don't see the point. Maybe I'm not target audience anymore, or well, maybe I'm I don't too think careful. we are, well, because we're PC gamers. Audience in 15, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. That's probably true. But, but we're pretty hardcore PC gamers anyway, so I yeah. don't think we are what they're looking for at all here. But like I say, they're not going to draw console boys who buy consoles just because they know they can buy any game off a shelf, stick it in their machine, and it'll work. Absolutely. And they do that because it's easy. They don't have to worry about upgrading anything as long as they're still releasing games for that machine it'll play and 
you know what? Maybe it's time that the console boys learned what it's like to be a real gamer. Well, that's what they're, that that's, that's what they're to trying to do. But like I say, but they're not Good. they're not doing it simply enough. They're they're still listing these bunch of specs that guys playing on their Xboxes that never touched a PC aren't going to have a clue what that means. They're not going to have yeah. a clue how that's going to perform, and yet they're meant to make a judgment that this is their Valve's big plan of of you know competing with consoles. You like I say they need well, they to have, have to some, find some sort way of rating. Like, uh, fund Half Life Three. Well, they're not do. They don't need the money, Morel. This is what I'm saying. This is why they haven't made Half Life Three because they're making thirty percent on every fucking game they sell on Steam. They're just Certainly. sitting there and watching their bank balance rocket for doing which, nothing apart from hosting a load of servers, basically. Yeah. Uh, which, which is expensive. Well, it's expensive, yeah. but I guarantee you it's nowhere near as expensive as the money that they're pulling in from this shit. They're making a fortune. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Actually, that does sort of bring us neatly onto the... the developer news uh, that was actually for me that was like the biggest news of last week mm. um, you can do the honours sir it's, it's certainly something that I'm I'm going to look at uh, I'm going to look into I'm going to try these things is that um, yeah uh, the, pretty much all, all the big free engines Unreal 4 uh, you've got uh, Unity 2 and you is it Unity 2 or is it just Unity I can't remember uh, but it's Source 2 as well all of them are free and I think yeah. I actually said the number there, which is weird because I've got a lazy tongue and I can't say it, but I did mean free. Um, <laughs> free to use. Free. Uh, yeah. And pretty much all of them are free to use unless you start making commercial revenue. Source 2 is yeah. completely free. Uh, the only catch to that one is that if you release anything, then it has to be put on the Steam store and then obviously they'll take their it's percentage the cut out it. of it. Uh, but yeah. the the interesting thing about this is because that's written into it is that if you release a game commercially, it has to be on the Steam store. For people like me and you, and small indie developers, does that completely bypass the green light system? Because from, sounds like it. Yeah, because they've put this term in there that your game has to be on on the store. So as long as you're using their engine. It just it, that seems a little strange to me. I I'm going to get on it tonight. I'm going to uh, make sure that I have a rough early access alpha that I can put on the store because I want to exploit this before they uh, fix that loophole. Well, that's the thing. I mean, yeah, they seem to be shooting themselves completely in the foot because the whole idea behind Greenlight is that you've got that many indie fucking developers and whatever guys in their basement making games. The Greenlight system is meant to try and weed. The better ones out of that, isn't it? That's that's the whole point. So if they're saying as long as you're using our engine, you will get you're guaranteed a place on the store. It's a uh, it's a very strange. Everyone look for Morel's adventures tonight on Steam. <laughs> it's going to be five ninety nine. Morel's uh, dark early, dungeon. Early, early early access. You're going to be able to access the loading screen, uh, <laughs> but. Hopefully in the next patch we're going to be able to add some stuff, so keep an eye on it. Uh, development should be good. Hit us up on at Gaming with Murel and uh, keep track of that, because that's totally going to happen, and I'm not going to forget it. Uh, just, uh, with, with, with your internet, I think downloading the engine is probably going to take the longest time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can you get it on disk? You know what, Rev? <laughs> I I guarantee it'll be finished downloading by the time I get back from kicking your ass. You hear me? <laughs> Good luck, sir. The it very probably best would. That would take you quite a while. It, it, it would. Um, yeah, I, I think I actually think this is a genius idea, um, giving it's, these things away, because when you think a lot of these sort of poor underground developers, I would imagine that they, they, they don't procure these engines uh, legitimately, if you know what I'm saying. Um, whereas this, it's like basically, look, it's free, and if it actually gets anywhere, then then you pay as cash. Yeah, exactly. Which, um, which they know full well people are probably taking advantage of using their engine, um, but just not paying. Well, look, I mean, does it really price. harm them if if people are using their engine and making no money from it? They're not really okay. losing out, are they? 
It's absolutely genius. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's a really good thing. I think good on them. Um, it's about time they sort of took that initiative. And it is the big three as well, which is interesting. Um, obviously a bit of a fuck you to the other two. Um, uh, who was it that did it first? Uh, it was it was Unreal Four. Well, the, the the thing is, this is this was all at GDC, so it, it it it's weird that all three of them have come out in the same week and said it. But then again, I suppose it depended on if there was if there was all planning on doing this, like before GDC. No, I guarantee they weren't planning. Well, on that's it. the Word thing. Though, it, that's what I think. When Unreal, when Unreal came out, because it, they were like, "Oh, Unreal's going to release their engine yeah. quick. We should we should totally make the Source engine free." But what if they start making money on it? Oh, well, we'll just say they have to put their games on the Steam store. That works. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, that I didn't do that, and it wouldn't surprise me if that's the way it went down at all. Um, well, I, I I think the big winner is anyone that plans on doing game developing. Yeah, bedroom developers definitely, it's, which it's, is a fantastic thing. I mean, you look at it this way. You know, you've got the next guy who who's developing the next Minecraft sort of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, exactly. Who who couldn't afford? Yeah, right, Omar. Um, who couldn't afford to to legitimately buy a, a decent enough game engine to do this before? Now he's got anything he wants, absolutely free of charge, uh, and all they ask is a is a cut of the cash once you start making money. I think I can't remember if it's Unreal Four or whether it was the Unity one. Uh, their like tagline was "We don't succeed unless you succeed," and that is a fantastic mm-hmm. way of doing business. Is, but uh, if you think uh, about it, it makes sense because if you go on Steam and you buy, you know, Murel's Super Fun Adventure Times, and it pops up and it's like, I wouldn't. It's got a lot of negative reviews. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because we're early access. Once it hits full, it's going to be great. But it pops up and it's like powered by, you know, Unreal or Source or Unity or whatever. And then you really enjoy the game. All of a sudden, I've done all the legwork to advertise in front of these people. It's a very beautiful symbiotic relationship between the professionals hmm. and the amateurs that want to do it. It's, it's a great. And it's a, it's a really I good think thing. this is probably the best bit of gaming news for indie devs in a very long time. Mm. 100%. No two ways about it. I, 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 yeah, uh, th- these things might as well be free because people are going to be using those tools anyway, so they may as well use them legitimately, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think that's, I, you know, personally, I couldn't give two shits because I don't see me ever ever going in and, and attempting to to do any of this this side of things. Um, the creative side of games, now that would interest me, coming up with concepts. And, yeah. Uh, and ideas and stuff, but in terms of the actual programming and the the long slog of making it, uh, no, not so much. But I do I do think it's very cool. You know, it's 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 a sweet thing that they've done. Um, it's kind of a clever commercial business decision too, um, because I think you're going to have a lot more people. Although, will you? This is the question, right? Do you think that it's actually going to mean more people will be out there getting games? published on steam well this is the issue isn't it i mean like, like we were saying earlier with them saying that if you release a game it has to be on steam like i say if that cuts out the green light pro the green light process then we might end up seeing an even more steam front page full of absolute shite than what we're used to now because that's the question it, it they, i mean even with the green light system there's still a lot of gash that gets through well see i'll be completely honest steam has looked at my game library and they were like hey 75 percent of your games are all indie games so this is what i'm going to suggest to you and all the games steam wants me to buy complete shite yeah i mean you you like look utter shite you look i mean probably yeah you look at the upcoming titles on the steam front page look at the top 20 and then mark how many you're actually interested in or have heard about there's not going to be many yeah I mean I do that right now but I'm scared to kill the call (laughs) (laughs) it does get it wrong oh my god Blockland that's in no way a rip off of Lego and Minecraft (laughs) Uh, but there's so many of those I can name a ton of them off the top of my head this is my concern. It's like saturation. Craft you, evolved. You, you know, well, I, mean, I mean, we can't talk because we, we all actively enjoy Seven Days to Die. But in terms of like, like Minecraft came out and despite it looking like it was 
from the early 90s and all that kind of stuff. Minecraft is, is like bigger than than Jesus. Jesus. You know? Yeah. And um, that, that's that's the thing. It's like well, one, just one of the these things. Thing. But how often does something come along that is so genuinely unique that it ends mm-hmm. up spawning a thousand, mm-hmm. uh, you know, games that follow it? And, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say it, I think most games that are revolutionary and groundbreaking have been done. I, I don't know how much further things can, can be taken. I disagree to a certain point because I think the issue is that if I and you, Rev, sat down, we could come up with a groundbreaking game. And this is kind of a hobby of mine. Whenever I get an idea for a movie or something, I write it down because I am one of those creative types. The issue is that my programming knowledge isn't enough to put it to work. I think I've shifted since I've started. So I can come up with a brilliant game concept, but the most I will ever get done is a start menu that kind of looks shitty and doesn't work. <laughs> I think I'm going to be honest. I think what you're saying here, Rev, but, and I, I kind of uh, mirror your thoughts in a, in a way, but I think that might only be because uh, to come up with a groundbreaking idea now is obviously difficult, yeah. really difficult. So if we could just pick one out of the sky, then we could be the next Minecraft selling selling it to Microsoft for $2 billion but, or whatever it was. You know, it's not that again, easy. Blake, I've seen some of your games, and uh, everyone keep an eye out on Steam because Blade is currently working on a text-based game. Uh, but really, do you think you could sit down and program the next Minecraft? If I came to you and I was like, I'm Urel from the future, this is going to be the next Minecraft. I want you to make it. If Could you, you do it? If you gave me money... I'm not giving you the code, I'm just no, giving no, no, you no. the idea. If, if, if you, yeah, if you gave me an idea and the money so I didn't have to go out and work, I would have a bloody good go at it, but... But do you think Notch had the money to start... It's all about whether or not indie devs these days have the ability, or not the ability, but the willpower to go hungry to make their dreams come true. In all reality, you may be living in your mom's basement, eating craft dinner yeah. and microwave ramen to make this dream happen. To Are you degree. committed enough to do it? Well, I think we're, we're now in the, the days of crowdsourcing, of greenlighting. I, I, there's now... But how do you convince someone to do this project with you without money? You because know, I could go on reddit.com slash r slash indie gaming and I could be like, hey, I have this cool idea. And I think you but have to. It I not. think some of it's luck as well, you know. Like oh, it's got to be a huge oh, yeah. involved. The right people. I can't remember the name of it. There's a, there's a space game that's being developed. That's like super. Mm. I'll see if I can find out the name. Star of it. Citizen. It could be. I it's can't remember. Over forty million dollars have been trainer. raised. Uh, have been yeah. raised so far. There's there's one guy that plays on altislife.co.uk who who donated twenty thousand pounds of his own money. A lot of people to have that. Man. A lot of people have, and and these people are out there. And you know, in all fairness, um, that uh, all three of us—that's that's like a year's income. So that's a year of work. If if you look at it that are way, are you kidding me? I make like at most eleven thousand pounds a year, like at most. Well, you know what I'm saying. The point. The point is and that's with that free clients every day. Bear, bear in mind that you're going to be putting in. I mean, estimate it. What you're going to be putting in? I bet you're looking at. 12, 16 hour days if you're going to be programming your own project, small team yeah. you're going to be putting in an awful lot of time oh, and, and and this is the thing, you know it's it's like if I, I think these people if, if they can get the crowd running then, then god damn good luck to them and you know, but then when you bear in mind if that, if that then caught fire, I mean that's only with oh, I can hear music or something there's a kettle oh a kettle um <laughs> Now, now, how many of those people do you need before you suddenly got a team of developers? And then before you know it, you know... But the issue with that is, too, and I was actually reading up on this, is that a lot of the issues we see about these indie games being crowdsourced... I'm a gesticulator, and this is killing me. So a lot of these games, you get this one guy who's like, I need $15,000, and I can make this game. 
And then overnight, they have $1.2 million. Like, way, 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 way out of their realm of expectations. Yeah. And now people are expecting a game worth $1.2 million. So then they're building a team, but because they're an indie game, you know, some of them are working out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and some of them are working out of wherever the hell you guys live, and some of them are in Texas, and some of them are in Buenos Aires, and, you know, two or three of them are working out of the Middle East, and it gets this convoluted, started off great, and ended piss poor. And we see this with Pixel Piracy. Again, a game that started out great, had a ton of support. And then the devs eventually were just like, we're sick 18-hour days. Fuck but, it. But Game's done. Day Z's the same. That's yeah. uh, more or less what happened. Well, even you the know, Project you, Leads left that one. You, you, yeah. But I mean, if you look at it, Dwarf Fortress, that's been in development now for 15 years. And it's just two brothers that are doing it for free. People, mm. These games, these genre-defining games, can be built by one guy. It's but our expectations, you know, really hinder that. You know, Minecraft blew up. Terrific. But do I do any of us have the wherewithal to make something like that happen? <clears throat> you know, even if I gave you eighty thousand Canadian dollars or, you know, a tenner, <laughs> would that would that be enough for you to sit down at a computer for sixteen hours a day for the next year and a half? To work on something that may just get shit on on Steam. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's why you end up with so many clones. Yeah. Because people because just like to easy. play it safe. Yeah. yeah. You can go and you can say, Minecraft worked, so I'm going to make Murel's Marble Block Adventure. <laughs> and it's essentially the same thing, but it's only $4 on Steam. You know? In perspective, the company I work for, we, we used to do websites. And these projects could, could rumble on forever, but the amount of inquiries we got that were just genuine waste of time inquiries where everyone thinks that you're going to back their project because I've got this brilliant idea. Um, it's a social networking site where we can share videos, this, that, and the other, and it was like, wow, you've created Twitter. Best of luck. Not really, uh, you know, we're, we're not really going to be involved. And they think that they've come up with some groundbreaking, earth-shattering idea that someone's already done and they're doing it better. And yeah. for you to, like, catch fire and suddenly you know you're not going to compete with twitter for christ's sake and yet a lot of people think that's going to happen i I think it's so rare but occasionally they do Uh, and even then though it depends the the level of sort of success depends on what your definition of it is in terms of like seven days to die yes it's it's minecraft concept and for me it's a winning thing but in terms of like actual downloads and actual sales, people playing it on Twitch for fuck's sake, what is there normally like five, seven people Something tops? Like that, yeah, there's not many. And then you compare that to Minecraft, it's not even comparable. No. So really, the, the, the question is, it depends on how you're really defining like the level of success. How do you know that you've suddenly arrived as a developer? And that that really is the question. I mean, ov- obviously, uh, DayZ has done super well, but it doesn't feel finished. And many people are sort of saying maybe it never will be um certainly not to the extent uh and, and to be honest dean hall i've read a lot of uh, articles this week where he's being compared to peter molyneux um, <laughs> yeah what an it's never a good thing which, which basically molyneux i can't remember the, whatever the project is he's been working on is it goddess goddess was, oh um, my God. and he's done his usual peter molyneux like hard sell of like it's going to be the best thing ever it's going to be incredible nothing will be like it uh, it's it's going to do this, it's going to have that, you're going to be able to create this entire world and all your worlds will connect, so you'll have like a universe of uh, all these little separate lands and all, and, and it's just not happened and he's had to publicly apologise yet again. Um, and, and I read an article where they were com- comparing Dean Hall to Peter Molyneux because he gave all this hype. And I actually think the difference was when he was developing the Daisy mod he was doing it because it was the game he wanted to play and he absolutely loved it. And I think suddenly taking that guy out of his proverbial bedroom and putting him as head developer with a team of, I don't know, 30, 50, however many they've got, it's a different kettle of fish. Oh, yeah. And this is what I was trying to get apart or get to, I guess, when I was discussing like the games that get overfunded and don't know what to do with it. This is one guy that created a huge 
you know, cultural phenomenon that, I mean, blew everybody's minds. But now that he's been given all the power and everything he needs, you know, for the most part, it's been disappointing. You know, I was following Daisy for quite a while when they announced the standalone, and honestly, I've stopped caring. Because every time I started looking into it, it was another excuse for why something's been pushed back. Or another excuse defending something they've already done. Or, you know, hey, there hasn't been an update in a month and a half. Sorry, LOL, K thanks, bye. Mm, but I much. think we're going to see that more and more and more, especially with the release of these engines. Because, very simply put, unless you have a boss and your job is literally threatened by you not meeting deadlines, you know? You're gonna push it back. Who gives a shit? You're the boss. I think to some degree. I don't think. I don't think that was the problem with Daisy. I still, you know, I still maintain that's not the issue with it. I think it's just, uh, you know, a, a guy that's developing a game because it's the game he wants to play and the game he loves. I think suddenly putting that guy as head of a team, it's not necessarily how we ever envisioned it happening. Well, that's um, exactly what happened to Notch, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and I think you know, it's it's. It's a different thing. Fundamentally, the guy's a gamer. And I actually, you know, although there's a lot of sort of disputing uh, facts and things, I actually think credit due to him that he walked. Um, because it, it kind of, to me, it shows that he's got some sort of... Yeah, it wasn't, It wasn't. yeah, basically. It, it wasn't his picture of how it was going to be. And, and obviously, then you've also got things like financial backers, uh, people pressuring you to, to get things out to deadlines and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, as as we've discussed before, I'm very much someone that I would sooner have something that's great when it comes out rather than mm-hmm. uh, something that's been rushed and it's not finished and it's clearly not finished and it's shit. Um, that said, though, you know, I've enjoyed playing Daisy. I just wish it was a little further along. And I think that's uh, that's fully expected by quite a lot of people, to be quite honest with you, I think. Mm. Um, it, it's obviously going to be a great game, but... It, really could do with a bit of acceleration it's it's too too far yeah but anyway you know it is it is what it is and uh you know i'm, I'm glad that I, I bought it and that i've been playing it for all this time but well, it's, I mean, you know, yeah, you've got you've got a good bit of play out of it so but anyway. i think at the end of the day as an avid indie gamer i love both love and loathe the time we're in, because I think I've touched on this before, but this is the first time really ever that you can sit down with no experience whatsoever and say, I have an idea for a game and make mm. it happen and make a fortune doing it. Mm. The thing it's is, all on, about the effort. On, on, the, on the downside, you've got guys with no experience whatsoever sitting down, creating games... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's don't a have an idea. Well, the the guy who uh, released it's now Infestation Survivor Stories. Yeah. The uh, guy who made the War Z knockoff. Um, I actually looked into that because I fell for this at first, and I am so ashamed. I even told Blade to buy War Z because I thought it was the Daisy standalone. They were advertising it like it was the Daisy standalone, yeah. and it took me. You know, I looked at it, I was like, oh, $45, I don't think I can do that, I have to wait to payday. And then, looking through it, I was like, oh, this isn't Daisy. what's going on here? It's not anything. And we looked, I looked into it, his Infestation Survivor stories or whatever, is a clone of a game they released that failed, and the only difference is they put zombies in it. And his only other notable title was... Oh god, what was it? I wish I could remember this. this it was a racing it was. game about big rigs. And if you hit any other cars, you flew off the track and it broke the game. <laughs> wow. And <laughs> Should I stop my thought or just keep going? No, keep going. And uh, when you it didn't matter if you ran out of time or if you crossed the finish line, at the end you got a title that said you are win. And a yeah, I've, seen, I've seen that. I've seen that played by some people. Um, I think in some cases as well, depending on on the truck or the map that you're playing, uh, the computer uh, controlled truck 
didn't even move. Yeah, no, the the AI trucks never moved. No. In any of them. And I mean, for you know, you may have to go through a hundred of those to find an any game worth its weight in salt. But I think realistically, you know, maybe we just need to lower our expectations from these one or two man dev teams. Mm. I you know, suppose. we can't compare them to a team that was funded by Sony. Sure, we can shit on H1Z1, but that also had a multi-million dollar dev team that yep. spent, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week in and, an office with the best technology. And I think we're all agreed that we expected better from them. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, and we should have. Because, again, if you have unlimited money, it, it should be good. Mm -hmm. Period. You'd think... But this, <laughs> yeah, but this is what you know. It brings us back to the overpriced AAA titles that are pretty much fucking shocking, and they've not finished them. Uh, and I, honestly, I do think credit if if you're going to wait and bring it out finished, credit due because that takes some balls. Yeah. Like you've got the whole world waiting. You know, Grand Theft Auto, for example. But you you still can't beat a guy that is making the game that he fucking loves that he wants to play. And and I think this was the thing with DayZ, the whole concept. And why there's so many games like it now is because it was the game everyone wanted. Yeah. The actual zombie survival where you've got to actually live. When you die, you die. Suddenly it's like actually, you know, and, and, and also, you know, off the back of things like, you know, we've had a spate of zombie films. We've got The Walking Dead. And I think everyone's like so into that right now. Mm -hmm. And it's been saturated since, to be fair. Um, yeah. But when I first heard about it, I was like, my God, this is the game I've always wanted to play. Uh, before, we, before we wrap things up, gentlemen, um, we need to announce the winner, don't Ooh. we, of our seven days uh, competition. Beautiful. We should really, yeah. Yeah. Was it me? Considering Did that I finished it? at February, uh, and it's now, what, the 9th? That's fine. Technical March, issues. Like that. Technical issues. Yeah. Mm. Well, thanks again no to, the, to, uh, to the fun pimps, I believe they're called. <laughs> The fun pimps are awesome. Great they game. are awesome. They gave us uh, they gave us this code to uh, give it away. So let's have a look, shall we? Okay, then let's see who is going to be the winner of our competition. Let's roll the dice, and it well, is. I hope it's me. Oh, but it's not. Can it I is have it? Ian Wilcox. Congratulations, sir! <laughs> you are Wilcox. the winner of Seven Days to Die. Ian Wilcox, you are a champion, sir. Indeed, courtesy of of the fun pimps. And uh, Red Hot Gamers. And Red Hot Gamers, of course. Thank you very much. And uh, URL specifically. Uh, I arranged everything. He did. He puts That's so fun. much effort in. It's unreal. <laughs> he did. Uh, thank you for joining me, gentlemen. It has been a pleasure this evening. Uh, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Hilariously, yes. we never covered the one topic that we were going to cover. <laughs> we didn't cover which, which like, was any of the top topics. three games that we, we completed. Ah, That's we right. Yes. Um, Mine's a pretty short like a list if you want to go through it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's up to you. I don't know. I mean, I, I just thought I want to go through point. it. Come on, Red. Well, I, can, I can name them right now uh, yeah. because there's probably only been three that I've completed to completion. Uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time. Oh, amazing. What do you it's, think it's, of Zelda? it's in one of my good ones uh, not long ago. Uh, Half Life 1. Uh, I finished all the way through. Um, uh, what should we go for number three? Uh, Black. If you remember Black, shooty game. Racist. It was it was a PS2 game. It was only quite short, which is kind of why I probably finished it. Uh, but it graphically, it was amazing. It was absolutely brilliant. The graphics were. The story wasn't terrible, but um, yeah, it's probably because it was only about four hours long that I finished it. Uh, mm. Anyone else? I don't heck, I'll, I'll I'll go then. Um, I I no, I thought we were going for like hundred percent completion type things, which uh, obviously the Zelda's they're the sort of game that you do. Um, but well, uh, if we're talking storyline, that's all I'm talking about because oh. because seriously, mate, I have not finished anything hundred percent. Oh God, I do. I I love it. Uh, Vice City. That's there's there's a big one right there. Vice City, hundred percent got everything. Uh, and the coolest thing about Vice City was the the T-shirt that you got at the end that said "I completed GTA Vice City," and all they got was this lousy T-shirt. <laughs> two like two thumbs up for that. That's incredible. Do you still have that? Go find that. 
We're uh, just going to sit that here will be you on a memory card on PS2 <laughs> in the loft somewhere. You mean you didn't get a physical T-shirt? That's gay. Oh God, no! What do you expect? What developers? No, no, no. Are... It was it was virtual. <laughs> it was it was a vir- that was the beauty of virtual in-game T-shirt. I thought that was so classy. That's genius. Um, uh, yeah, pretty much uh, any Assassin's Creed with Ezio. Uh, so sort of <laughs> Assassin's Creed Two, Brotherhood, Revelations, all 100 percent collected everything. Um, that's retarded, and, uh, mate. I know, I know it is, but I, I, I loved it that much. You know, like that's the thing. I, I loved those games. Um, but the other one, Red Dead Redemption, um, that I just had so much. I, I actually loved it so much that even collecting all the fucking animal skins, everything, it was such a good reward system. That I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. So Morel, with the bag in the background, I wonder what's in there. <laughs> Not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> a bag of dicks. <laughs> Look at all just, these dicks. Just preparing his, his supper treat. <laughs> My uh, pudding, yeah. if you will. Yes, yes. Can com- I just complete- go on record and say it's incredibly hard to explain to an Englishman what pudding is? Uh, well, we know what pudding is because we no, invented the language. No, you don't. You think, like, cakes and tarts and shit like that is pudding. No, pudding is different to cakes. It doesn't have to be a cake. It could be any sort of sweet treat that you eat after your dinner. Essentially, yeah. But don't you class pudding as shit like blancmange and stuff over there? No, no. Uh, see, uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have opened this bag of dicks. I should have just left this bag of dicks closed. The six, the no, dicks a pudding is everywhere. like a flavored custard. Like you can get butterscotch pudding, and it's just like this, like kind of well, a milk-based cream we that's like still flavored. Call Angel delight, I believe you're describing. Uh, see, that just sounds yeah. like a really shitty street drug or a porno name. I think that's... Angel Delight's awesome. It's, like, it's, it's the only dessert that is ready in, in under, like, five minutes that you prepare yourself. You actually cook it yourself. And by cook it, I mean pour in milk, stir it, bang it in the fridge mm. for five minutes. Oh, see, and you're talking about a brand. Dude, fuck off. Do you have I, any... I guess it would be similar to Angel Delight, but not... Oh, yeah. It would be similar. I don't suppose there's any S- games that you'd like to mention. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. Uh, as far as 100% completion, I have never 100% completed a game. That's fair enough. Um, however, I have finished the Pokemon storylines mm-hmm. and most of the Saints Row series. That's fair enough. Yeah, and a handful of GTA Actually, I did those two. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm thinking about it. I'm an extreme. Fuck off, eight. motherfucker! Stop stealing my thunder. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> You're just jealous of my sad 100 percent completion uh, record. It's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty sad. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching or listening, whatever you're doing. Uh, thank you to the Reverend for joining me. Uh, I've been Blade, and we're joined as well by the best Canadian in this podcast, Morel. Thank you. We're Take care, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, if you've liked us, we're the Red Hot Gamers. If you haven't, we're uh, gaming with Morel at twitter.com. Uh, until next time, we'll see you later.